All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we are talking about the Anathema Domain Cleric. This is from MCDM's Arcadia number nine, so make sure to check that out. If you're new to the channel or the series, what we're gonna do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're gonna rate the roleplay, combat, and synergy based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on base class abilities. That's correct. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Sourcebook bundle giveaway. Or other giveaway choice. That being said, let's get right into it. What do we get, Alex? We are a cleric, so we're going to get some anathema domain spells, inflict wounds, protection from evil and good, hold person, rave, enfeeblement, bestow curse, counter spell, banishment, phantasmal killer, dispel evil and good, and hold monster. It's all right. Pretty terrifying I see list. Some, I see a couple hold words in there. Seems, seems all right. <laughs> and also at level one, we're going to have people and their fun words, <laughs> anathematic rights. At first level, your knowledge of forbidden rituals allows you to access magic normally unreachable to other clerics, a la Counterspell. <laughs> you, you can cast cleric spells that have the ritual tag as rituals, even if you do not have them prepared. So long as they their level does not exceed the maximum spell level, you can cast as a cleric. However, when you cast an unprepared spell in this way, you do take 1d6 psychic damage per level of spell, and this damage cannot be reduced in any way. Yes. We also have, at level 1, Divine Rancor. As one of the scorned, you wield your deity's rancor as a tool to hinder your foes. Starting at first level, you always have the Bane spell prepared, and it doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare. When you cast Bane, you can change the casting time to one bonus action instead of one action. You can cast the spell as a bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. We will see more about the Bane spell Later, because that is what a lot of this stuff is built around. Yes. Your Channel Divinity up is Divine Derogation, level 2. You can use Channel Divinity to diminish the capabilities of creatures of faith. As an action, you can create a 30-foot aura of discordant divinity around you that lasts for one minute or until you fall unconscious. When a creature in the aura magically regains hit points or takes radiant or necrotic damage, you can roll a d6. On a 4 or higher, the amount of hit points regained or damage taken is reduced to 0. So if your ally right. takes necrotic or radiant damage, you can 50-50 shot to negate it. Mm -hmm. Or if an enemy uh, receives healing, you can uh, say no. 50-50 shot to negate it. Yeah, it's very interesting because it gives you utility uh, as a defensive option and offensive option. So yes. you can prevent like a troll or something from healing, regening hit points. Yep. Or, you know, just say no to it. Potentially a huge chunk of damage because... I mean, technically, like, you're fighting against an enemy high-level cleric that wants to cast the heal spell. And yep. you're just like, 50-50 shot, it's, I counter that. Yeah. That's, that can be <laughs> absolutely that massive. It can be wild. It can be, as long as you're positioned well yep. and lucky. Yes. You know. I mean, 50-50 shot, it's a coin flip. Take, take it. You ain't going to make me upset about it. No, no. Kind of would have ruined at level 6, we also get, you learn to focus the ire of your god to further hamper a creature suffering from it. Before a creature rolls the d4 from a bane spell cast by you, you can use a reaction to upgrade the d4 to a d6. As you gain levels in this class, the malediction imposed by this feature grows even stronger. You can upgrade the die to a d8 at 11, a d10 at 17th level. So eventually, you're going to be able to subtract a d10. Yes. As a reaction, and it does use a reaction, it has to use a bonus action to apply it in the first place. Yep. But you can apply Bane to three creatures at once. Yup. So, uh, yeah, you could be doing some uh, major reductions. Yeah, B big debuff to some stuff. Level 8 is going to give us... Coin flip again? Is it Which one? <laughs> which one? Okay, potent spell casting. So you're going to add your wisdom modifier to any damage you deal with a cleric cantrip. No shockers there. And finally, at level 17, we have Scornful Condemnation. You no longer need to concentrate on the Bane spell. When you cast it, it lasts for its full duration till you cast the spell again or until you fall unconscious. Additionally, your ability to channel Divine Hatred is so masterful that it harms those burdened with it. The first time a creature rolls the die for a Bane spell cast by you on its turn, it also takes Psychic Damage equal to the number rolled on the die. All right. So... Never thought I would see a subclass entirely built around one spell. <laughs> the Bane spell. Yeah, Dad Gummit, this does it, and it's it's fun. 
Yeah, I will say we probably should just take just a second here and just go over Bane itself well, because it is important to, to to have a full understanding of what it is. So just to, to take because yeah, you're not just getting it for free. It, it's, so, it's so much more than that. It is a first level spell, and the thing that's nice too is you know it and it's prepared for you and doesn't count as prepared, but you also can cast it several times for free, mm-hmm. which is great for extra spell slots. So it is a concentration uh, for one minute, one action cast time, bonus action for you, thirty foot range, charisma save. Which is the Which best is thing about already it. Already fantastic. Yeah, a level one spell that you're going to get to scale up with you that attacks one of the two best saves to go after with as a general rule. Right. Okay. So with it, up to three creatures of your choice that you can see within range make a charisma saving throw. Whenever a target that fails this save makes an attack roll or a saving throw, before the spell ends, the target must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. And then if you cast it at higher levels, you can target an additional creature for each spell slot above first. Yep. So you could potentially, you know, upcast it, target a bunch of things, and reduce uh, a bunch of things' uh, abilities. I think the better way to go about this is if you can make sure, once you maybe, after the first round of combat, figure out what initiative order is. Yep. And then you can determine what things to target so that you can maybe line up, you know, to subtract a d10, you know, the attack roll from an attack. Uh, before it comes to an ally, maybe you try to protect an ally, subtract the roll by 10, potentially. Yep. Um, or I still think of set some, up, some of the most powerful things like you could hold monster and or set dominate up monster and ancient red dragon because, like, well, they'll never fail it. It's like, well, subtract. We, we, we cut seven off that saving throw. We'll see how they feel. Yeah, about that's, a, that's, a, that could that's a big. If you cut. cut 10 off of a save, feeble mind, that is massive. Yeah. Like, huge. That is a ton. So, yeah, to be able to I mean, do that... Like you're talking about yeah, cutting CR 17, 18, 19 monsters proficiency bonus, in, or their, like their saving throw bonus in half. Yeah, it can it can make a big difference. And mm-hmm. to be able to target multiple things, <laughs> yeah. and you could just... And it's such a low-level spell. To yeah. target, you just every turn bonus action. You know, you cast it, recast it once, you know, they've all used their attacks yeah. or been hit by something the, with the, the save. The only drawback to this... Is the fact that Bane is a concentration spell until you get to right. seventeen or the concentrate on more? Then it's just I'm throwing it. The throwing other thing Bane's out. too is if you bonus action with it, um, you have to you would have to cast a cantrip because you can't cast two spells in one Correct. turn. So that does kind of limit your options a little bit. But but I mean you're setting up your party. It's more of like a you know yeah. combo. You're kind leaning of more into the support role with doing this this way. But once you hit seventeen, it's just ridiculous. So all of those things out of the way, we'll jump into the rating portion. Oh, Role yeah. play is first, asterisk as always, talking about roleplay, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass, how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. That's correct. So, all that being said, um, there's not a ton of focus in the roleplay side of things. The biggest thing that comes in with roleplay with this is going to be the ritual spell casting. Yep. Which, in and of itself, there's only so many ritual spells in the first place. There is. Um, and also, they'd have to be circumstantial to you know what you're doing for it to matter that you even have access to cast those. Yep. And you have to have time to do so as well. You do. So, it can be done. Um, it is great. It doesn't say anything about not using a spell slot. Uh, but yeah, so with that, you have to have the right circumstances line up do. to do so. But yeah. when it does line up... It can be pretty potent to get yeah. some some free spells. And out again, there. A part of that is is it would it also allow you then to carry more RP spells prepped mm-hmm. that that aren't ritual spells because you're not having to worry about carrying a single ritual spell that you don't really want to. You, have, you it frees you up to handle to just take whatever you want for combat spells or for RP spells that don't have ritual tags just so you know you can cast like okay I'm not gonna bother prepping to detect magic literally ever because. <laughs> It's going to be an RP most of the time. You're you've got the time to cast as a ritual anyway, so it's just okay. I'll take I'll take four damage just so I can detect any magic maybe in the area and not to worry about you know prepping that spell all the time. And you, know, you do have some of the, the spell list too. And technically, you could hold a person as a you know RP thing, uh, you know protection from you know even good. Some of those you could counter spell an RP spell. You know somebody, yeah. somebody has to do charm. You know trying to charm you or your friends or just something like that. You know there's. There's there's some counter spells. There's, there's some, some RP potential. potential with your spell list as well. Yeah, for sure. All that being said, that's really it though. Yeah. So we went with a two and a half. It's one of those things where if it lines up, it's fantastic because mm-hmm. it's just free spells basically. Yep. But 
again, falls under specific circumstances for a lot of the rituals. Yep, it sure does. Okay, um, with the combat side of things, obviously that spell list, I, I see holds as built-in free prep spells, so wonderful. Uh, then stuff like Raven Fieldment, Stow Curse, Go Away, as I call, like to call it, Leave of Banishment spells, fantastic. Again, it's prepped. And then stuff like the protection and then Dispel, Evil and Goods are one of those things like you feel like you never ever are going to cast them. Maybe it's like once or twice a campaign you fire those, but when you're glad you have them because you don't have to rep prepping them ever. So that's mm-hmm. great. And of course, Counterspell exists. And as a cleric, you don't get access to Counterspell. So the fact that it's you have access to it and it's prepped for you for free, yeah, that mm, just makes me so happy on the inside. Uh, same thing with the, the rights with the RP stuff. You know, it, it frees you up to take more combat-based spells um, because you don't have to prep ritual spells mm-hmm. in a story. Um, your ranker letting you cast Bane as a bonus action and all of the later things that are going to come with that is what only gets better as it yeah. goes. And I'll just stress too, even if you just subtract a D4, it's to subtract four from a creature's saving throw, like an ally casts a, a feeble mind or some big spell yep. or dominate and you subtract four and like they yep. just barely save it. Yep. That is that is massive. Even if it's just a D4, it's probably one of the better uh, first level spells that can be used later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and it can it even scales, force. Yeah. You can even potentially force creatures to burn legendary resistances. If, I hate it. I hate the mechanic, <laughs> but it's one of those things you got to make them use them. So yeah. you know, getting them out quickly, quick, more quickly. That's the all right. I do it. Um, as as potent as the rest of the bane stuff is going to be, because we can go through the rest of this real quickly. Um, I love the channel of divinity so much. I can't stand it. Uh, because yes, it's there is some luck involved to mm-hmm. it, but it also feels fun. If that it was way. if it was guaranteed, it would probably be too strong. Correct, especially and honestly, it would be stronger for the. Well, either way, it would be way too strong if it was one hundred percent. Yeah, either way, I was gonna think for <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. just randomly cutting out large amounts of healing might be worse, but maybe not. I mean, finger death <laughs> using the gate of finger death outright because it's necrotic damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's a thirty foot aura. And that's what really, I really love it about it is there is some luck involved. You're attacking radiant necrotic damage, which are good damage types in general mm-hmm. anyway, which aren't common unless you're fighting specific things. When mm-hmm. they do hit, you're just like, oh, this is my realm of expertise. It's what I get to play with, and things that not a ton of things do heal, but when they do, you can completely negate them at times. Uh, it's the fact that it is an aura. Because you're thinking like, it feels kind of like a paladin. Mm-hmm. So you're not you're not buffing one thing or firing off one thing to target one thing. It's an aura of effect around you. Like you're almost like you're putting in. This is my world right here. This little thirty foot bubble is my world. You don't want to come in here. You won't like what happens. Uh, it, it it's great. I really really like it. <clears throat> and of course with conduit of ruin, where your your, your bane's going to scale up to bigger and bigger dice. Of course, fantastic. And then finally at your capstone, you don't have to concentrate on bane anymore. And it just lasts the full duration for it automatically. And then they just take extra psychic damage when they have to roll for it every mm-hmm. time. It's just, yeah. it's It makes a spell that's already kind of pretty undervalued mm-hmm. uh, as far as how it's, like James said, it scales up with you as you go. Just makes it better and better. Uh, really, really love what this gives you for Combat Cleric. And I uh, gave it a four and a half out of yeah. a possible five. It's one of those things where it's... A subclass that you don't normally see much in D&D, which is like a debuff kind of subclass. Yes, because agreed. you focus so much. And changing, kind of switching over to synergy a little bit yeah. with this comment, and as I continue on, um, changing a spell's cast time from action to bonus action is a big deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's sure a reason it why it's a meta magic for sorcerers. Mm-hmm. It, it, not everyone has access to do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it can free up your turn where you can dash to get in range to something and then cast it. Or, you know, cast a cantrip and do something or make a weapon attack. You can do lots of stuff with your turn and still be throwing out th- potentially three or more debuffs yeah. a turn. So even if, even if you just used it every turn in combat, that's just going to be so annoying to your, yeah. to your enemies. Just yeah. to have to always subtract from the rolls every single turn. <laughs> it's it, it's going to hit more than it misses yep. um, on there. Especially once you get the reaction to subtract to D10. Like, that is... I gave I did, I did a little bit of a mistake and gave Alex a magic item in our campaign where he can add a D4 to his, spe- to his uh, saving throws. throws. Oh. And there's been so many Do times you know that many, D4 has saved him. Do you know how many times <laughs> I've, like, been one under or two under saving throw? I'm just like, okay, D4, save me. And it does. Like, yeah. I mean, and it's it's been 
wild. And some of them have been really bad effects. And he's like, and you make intelligence save? I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls like a 12. I was like, D4. Four, yes, let's go. So we've we've seen firsthand how much a D four can make a difference to yeah. saving throws. Again, sp- like attack rolls, getting that extra weapon attack in, fine. You know, like if you're like Bardic Inspiration early on, you know, bumping up that kind of thing. But or like bless, for example, the you know counterpart to Bane. But bumping up or cutting an enemy saving throw, again, it's to me, it's one of the most impactful things that can happen. Mm-hmm. So you're, if a creature's got legendary resistances, you got to get rid of them. Yep. Again, I hate them. It's <laughs> my most painful thing to experience in 5th edition. But you get rid of them, and then you milk them, burn them faster, and then you're doing what you got to do to actually work down through whatever you're fighting. Um, yeah. it's, it's super, super potent. I will mention one thing, too, that you got to keep in mind, especially if you're fighting casters, is uh, with Counterspell, it uses your reaction. So you have to be really careful if you want to keep that reaction open to Counterspell yep. to not... Use no. your Bane buff yes. <laughs> as a reaction because then correct. you might be locking yourself out from countering a potentially bigger spell. Yeah. So that's something you got to keep in mind. Uh, but again, you have to be fighting spellcasters and circumstances. Yeah. It might even be better for you to, you know, reduce, you know, a, a big hit on an ally, you know, yeah. from – it just – there's lots of things that can be done as a support with this kind of build, just debuffing enemies constantly. Is, uh, is a big deal. So to be able to do it so often and so easily and not use spell slots, at least, you know, proficiency bonus uses of spell slots, which yep. they're first level spells, but still, I mean, you'll take free spell slots when you can get them. There, there's a reason they only come back in the long rest in the first place. So that being said, one with a four and a half in synergy as well. It's going to yep. give you, you know, ritual spells are going to give you, you know, access to more spells that you don't have to prepare. You get extra free spell slots with with your bane stuff. Yep. Um, you get bonuses to that, extra support as uh, you know to your allies, debuffing enemies constantly. Yep. Just helps, being annoying. Helps you stay alive more, so you save your spells for you have to heal as much because if they're they're hitting yep. enemies are hitting your your team less or they're you know saving throws or and then of course that chest. massive channel divinity that can just hit so hard when it does God. hit. Mm. Again, so. it. Jameson's 100% correct. It could not be an all or nothing for either one of those options. Yeah. But it's both, it's a fun thing because it's a 50 50 shot mm-hmm. and it affects both a damage and a heal. It's And it's not a, small, it's not too small for it to be unimpactful. No. 30 foot range. I mean, there's paladins, don't get that until they're higher level. <laughs> you know, it's mm-hmm. only a 10 foot Because all their stuff is like all the time yeah. massives. Right. So. But yeah, very interesting, very flavorful, great support option for one, a cleric. It's one of it's one of my fav- personal favorite clerics we've we've ever yeah. done. I, I think I it'd love be this interesting thing. to make a build that's more unique to be like a debuff kind of character. Just take all mm-hmm. debuff spells. Take like yep. if, if you can get access, maybe you'd like uh, multi class to get access to like slows and you know other kind mm-hmm. of debuff spells. Just, just be a cancer. <laughs> just, <laughs> just be super annoying for yeah. enemies. But yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Check out our Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching.